When photographing an object in deep space, you might think you need a fancy telescope like this, or this, or even this. But that's simply not the case, and tonight we're gonna photograph the Orion Nebula with a 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. The trick to getting good photos of deep space objects is not an expensive telescope or lens. It's a tracking mount, like this Star Tracker. This is the iOptron Skyguider Pro. I mount my camera on this, and it moves the camera with the rotation of the Earth, freezing the sky and allowing me to do longer exposures. Another very important technique is called stacking, where we take multiple exposures. We take the same photo again and again and again for at least an hour or so, and we stack all those images together, and it gets rid of noise and brings out all this detail. Another quick note about stacking, if you don't already know, once you're done taking all your images, if you're on Windows, you can get some free stacking software like Sequitor or Deep Sky Stacker. They're very easy to use, free, and there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube. If you're on a Mac, you can get Starry Sky Stacker. It's not free, but what is free on a Mac anyway? The 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens is very versatile, but it's far from perfect. It can't focus red and blue light very well at the same time, so you might notice some purple fringing halos, blobs, or whatever around your stars. Those can be taken care of in post-processing. Also, beyond 200 millimeters, it's not very sharp. So let's go on a website called Telescopius and see what kind of focal length we should use to photograph the Orion Nebula. Okay, here we are at telescopius.com. This is a great astrophotography planning website. First thing you're gonna to want to do is create an account, and I've already done that. So I'm gonna click on my account. I'm gonna click Equipment. Now we add in our cameras and lenses and telescopes and whatever we have. So let's just look at my, I have a Canon 6D, I just brand Canon model 6D. You need to find out the sensor size of your camera. It's most likely gonna be full frame or crop sensor. My Canon 6D is full frame, so 35 millimeter full frame. If you have a crop sensor camera, it's either gonna be APS-C, or if you have a Canon crop sensor camera, it's gonna be Canon APS-C. A quick Google search will tell you if you have a full frame or APS-C sensor. Type in your sensor resolution, something that can also be found by doing a Google search on your camera. Just Google your camera model sensor resolution and hit save. Now let's go ahead and uh, create a lens. I'm gonna hit add, type. It's a lens instead of a telescope. Brand, Canon. Not worried about aperture. Focal length. It is a zoom lens, so we're gonna do minimum 75. Max, I'm gonna say 200 instead of 300 because I don't like to go over 200 with that lens. And I'm gonna hit save. Now that we've got our equipment added, we're gonna search for the Orion Nebula up here at the top. Here we are, and we're gonna scroll down to where we can look at the field of view. Here we go, first thing I'm gonna do is select my camera. And I have a Canon 6D. That's what I entered in in my equipment page. And here's my lens and telescope options. We're gonna go Canon lens at 200 millimeters and see what that looks like. This is going to be our field of view. The Orion Nebula is gonna be quite small. Let's see what it would look like if you had a crop sensor camera. I'm gonna go up to camera and select my Canon T5i. That is much more zoomed in. Now, if you wanted to manually adjust your focal length, you can click here on the telescope icon and just go to focal length and type in whatever focal length you think you might want to try. Like, let's say 150 millimeters. And that's what that field of view would look like. So this is just a cool way to see what the object is going to look like in your camera with your lens. Now I'm going to go back to Canon 6D and the 200 millimeters that I'm probably gonna be shooting with tonight because I really can't go much more than that. Now, one little surprise I see here is right over here, we have the Horsehead Nebula. We could get a two for one. I think this is gonna be a really cool idea. Let's go over to Stellarium and check that out for a minute. All right, we're in the app Stellarium or Stellarium. This is a desktop app and you can also get it on your phone for free. All right, I know Orion rises in the east, so I'm gonna scroll over until I see the east. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom where I see the little fast forward arrow, I'm just gonna fast forward in time until I see the Orion Nebula rise. There we go, looks like it's around 10.30, right there. I'm just gonna fast forward till it's a little higher in the sky. There we go, that's high enough in the sky to photograph and that's gonna be around midnight. So I'm gonna zoom in. The Orion Nebula is right here in the sword of Orion and here's Orion's belt. 
and we can see the horse head is right here in the star Ulnatok. So this is what our field of view is gonna look like, right here. Two for one, let's give it a shot. So that settles it. We're gonna shoot the horse head and Orion, both at 200 millimeters. Now, with this lens, we're going to have to tape this down with duct tape. I, I was gonna say electrical tape because duct tape leaves a sticky resin. <laughs> Screw it, we're using orange duct tape. <laughs> but seriously, it is important to tape this down at 200 millimeters so it won't slip, because that'll ruin your entire imaging session. And I am gonna use electrical tape. So let's practice getting set up. We're gonna take our star tracker and put it on the base here. Now we need to pull our line. We need to be facing north, where we can see the north star. I need to look up and be able to see the north star right over the top, right there. We're gonna open an app called Polar Finder or something like that. And we're going to see our latitude. And we're gonna dial it in right here on this latitude dial. Now we're gonna look in the same app and see where the North Star Polaris is supposed to be in the reticle, the little target looking thing inside the polar scope. When we see where it's supposed to be, we're just going to adjust our star tracker up, down, left, and right with the screws on the side and on the back to get the North Star exactly where it's supposed to be inside this reticle. Once we've done that, we're polar aligned. It takes a few times to get good at it, but after a while, you could do it in one or two minutes. Next thing we do is we take our camera and put it on the ball head and ball head adapter and attach it to the star tracker. This ball head allows us to move the camera in any direction. Right now, I'm facing north. Orion would be in the east towards you. So I'll just move it around, tighten her back down, and we're ready to shoot. Now, if you notice, there's a wire hanging out of my camera. That's because I like to use dummy batteries. I like to shoot for very long periods of time and don't want to worry about running out of battery. And this allows me to plug my camera directly into AC power. Now, being able to plug into power is a luxury I have because I live in a Bortle 3 class area. It's very dark out here. I live in the country. If you live in the city, you're going to have a very hard time shooting these uh, deep sky objects, unless you have some kind of specialized light pollution filter that could help. Otherwise, you need to drive out away from the city light pollution. Ah, one more thing before we get out there and start setting up for real. We're going to need an intervalometer. And what this does, it's a remote that connects to our camera that allows us to take exposures that are longer than 30 seconds, but it also allows us to take a sequence of photos. I can program it to take let's say 100, 200, however many I want. And it'll just start taking photos and I can leave the camera alone, walk away, go take a nap, go drink a beer, whatever I wanna do. And I usually have a little Velcro on my tripod leg so I can just stick it right on the side and walk away. So I'm just gonna plug that in. And we're good to go. What are you doing out here? I was just trying to pro, I mean, photograph Uranus. You would, get out of here. Now that we've got everything all set up, we need to find a bright star and manually focus on it. So we need to make sure our camera's in manual mode and our lens is on manual focus. 
All right, now in manual mode, we want to set our camera settings as high as they'll go to focus. High ISO, our lowest f-stop number, and shutter speed of 30 seconds, go into live view mode now. There's a star, it's actually not a star, it's Jupiter. That's one of my favorite things to focus on this time of year. Now we're just gonna zoom in on it using our zoom controls. If you have a newer camera, you can actually touch the screen and zoom in like a phone. And there it is. And we turn our focus ring until it's as small of a pinpoint as possible. And in this case, we can actually see the moons of Jupiter when it really gets into focus. And there we go, we have focus. Now let's set our final camera settings. I'm gonna go with an ISO of about 1600. I'm gonna change my f-stop to f6.3. And we're in bulb mode because I'm using a remote and we're gonna do one minute exposures. Here's what the remote looks like. It's gonna count down five seconds. Then it's gonna take a one minute exposure. If I like my test shot, I'll come over here and I'll program it to take as many pictures as I want. All right, I've taken a shot. Let's see what it looks like. That's pretty cool. I can see a little bit of the Orion Nebula right there in the middle. Core is a little blown out, but that's to be expected, especially since I'm trying to get this in the frame as well. It's hard to see, but that is the flame nebula. Right next to it is the horse head. All right, and that's about it. I'm gonna tell the remote to take 200 photos, but I probably won't even make it that far. I'm just gonna get up at two o'clock in the morning, come out here, put my lens cap back on, keep all my settings the same, and take 30 more photos. These are dark frames. They'll be frames of just the noise. They'll be stacked together with everything else, and that noise will be subtracted from my image. This lens is not gonna give you NASA award-winning quality photos, but it is a great place to start, and it's always just best to enjoy what you have. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, got anything out of it, give me a like, leave me a comment, and please do subscribe, because taking the pictures is only half the fun. Processing is a whole nother thing, and I'll be doing lots of processing videos coming up very soon, so subscribe for those. As always, everybody, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night.